Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, today's video is going to be an F-15 Eagle uh, against the Sukhoi 27. It's going to be a Fox 1 fight, so the Eagle is going to carry the AIM-7 Sparrow, and the Sukhoi is going to carry the R-27ER. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different in terms of the format. We're going to look at some analytical data between the AIM-7 versus the R-27. We're going to compare their speeds a little bit just so we have an idea of the capability of the missile before we actually go into the fight. And then we'll do the fight and then we'll have a look at the tack view. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, here's a graph of the AIM-7 Sparrow in blue versus the R-27ER in green. Alright, across the x-axis we have the true airspeed displayed in knots and across the y-axis on the bottom we have relative time okay from missile launch now this test was performed by two aircraft flying uh, co-altitude at 30,000 feet both firing the missiles at roughly the same time within a few milliseconds difference and attempting to maintain the same speed for initial launch uh, speeds right so it's not going to throw this off by too much um, there was a slight discrepancy in the speed of launch of the aircraft that you can see here but it's not going to be enough to really cause a difference in the data here not by too much the point we can still get from it is the same all right so let's go ahead and, and uh, look at this and see what we can figure out here um, this point when the the uh, speed starts to dip this is when the burn or the fuel of the missile uh, is finished right around here and for the sparrow at 30,000 feet um, not that the altitude changes how long the burner burns for but it just seems to go for about 11 seconds okay 11 seconds the R27 ER seems to end at exactly 10 seconds after launch okay so the Sparrow has a longer burn time however what we can see is that the R27 ER finishing its burn almost six seconds before the uh, AIM-7 Sparrow still manages to maintain a much faster, to achieve a much faster speed and thereby velocity. Okay, so, and we can see in the flight time here, right up to about here. Now at this point, neither one of these missiles has enough energy to be maneuvering and hitting a target. So it doesn't really matter that the speed intersects here. Uh, if it intersected over here somewhere, that would be totally different, right? This is still a pretty high probability of kill around this area. Um, the R27ER is able to maintain a much faster speed. Okay, and you can see that if this was a Fox 1 fight between a Sukhoi 27 and an F15, the Sukhoi's missile R27ER is going to hit the F15 much sooner than uh, the F15's missile is going to hit the Sukhoi. And once that happens, because these are Fox 1s, uh, the AIM 7 is going to lose track and the Sukhoi 27 is going to get to go home and the F-15 is not. So we can see that the Russian R-27ER is a far superior missile to the AIM-7 Sparrow. Okay, in terms of speed at least, you know, I'm not taking into consideration um, the ability of the missile to pull G's or its range, which the R-27ER has a much longer range than the Sparrow anyway. Um, there's other factors at play, but when it comes to speed, the R27ER appears to be significantly faster than the AIM-7 Sparrow. All right, so with that taken into consideration, let's go ahead and uh, watch a video between the 27 and the F-15 getting into a fight, okay, with Fox 1s only, and let's see who can win, who can force who defensive, and who can walk away. Based on the theory and the information we have here, um, Theoretically, the Sukhoi 27 should win. All right, let's go ahead and have a look. Okay, there he is on radar. Got him locked up.
I'm going to switch the radar to EORL, electro optical radar lock. That's Fox One. So you can see he's entered a notch, or he's trying to anyway. That's another Fox 1. Just going to continue to keep him defensive. None of these will probably hit him. You saw he was trying to turn back into me there, but that second missile forced him off again. I just want to stop him from getting his nose around getting his nose onto me so he can't fire. So that missile continues to force him defensive. Alright, he's gonna try to come around now. Yep. Fox one again. And that's a kill, splash one. Have a nice day. Alright guys, so here's the TAC view um, for that little scenario here. This is me in the red Sukhoi 27. This is Dundun in the blue F-15. Uh, both of us are carrying only Fox 1s. And basically the situation here, I want to see um, how did these two missiles fare up against each other? Can the R-27ER, I mean we know that the speed is significantly higher, we know the range is better, but you know, you don't really know anything until you test it out, is my theory. Um, and basically I just want to know like if you're ever flying an F-15 and let's say you used all of your AMRAMs, your FOX 3s, you only have FOX 1 left, your Sparrows, maybe FOX 2s only, FOX 1, FOX 2 combination and you get engaged by a Sukhoi 27, you know, and you're wondering should I turn around having only FOX 1 or FOX 2 and engage the Sukhoi 27, you know, um, what are my chances? And we're going to find out here what your chances are, okay? Obviously your chances, you always have a chance depending on how good of a pilot you are, but you know, we're just talking about like a head-on engagement here. Um, so right around 32 nautical miles we fire off that first R27 ER. Uh, no expectation of this hitting him. Uh, it's only just a, you know, force him defensive and I'm using my longer range uh, R27 ER capability is with the longer range than the Sparrow in order to do that. So that's one of my advantages that you're seeing here is my ability to choose when I force him defensive. Now Dundun in this situation goes immediately for uh, a beaming situation. Okay, A beaming situation means he, he goes 90 degrees so that my radar can't see him coming or going. He's not moving forward or backwards. 
and so that makes it difficult for the radar uh, to pick him up. However, it's not that hard because he's pointed, he's uh, painted across a blue sky. All right, which means that he needs to start dropping these chaffs, which are going to my radar will always see him okay it's never gonna not see him because only in a notch can I not see him but when he's beaming and he's painted across a blue sky I can see him what he needs to do is confuse me by dropping uh, more chaff and by dropping the chaff what happens is my radar can't distinguish which one of these targets uh, to go after and the reason for that is because they're both uh, they're all at zero uh, closure or moving away right because he's at 90 degrees he's technically not coming towards me or going away from me neither is his chaff so his radar has to choose between uh, one of those targets uh, sorry my radar has to choose between one of those targets uh, that first missile runs out of energy so I fire off the second one here because I want to continue to keep him defensive I don't want him to turn around and get nose hot on me continue to force him defensive now at this point I have my EORL on uh, which I believe indicates uh, electro-optical radar lock which means that even if the radar of the Sukhoi 27 loses him in a notch or in a beaming situation uh, it will try to maintain a lock via the electro-optical system which means that it's going to try to track the heat coming off his aircraft the ability to maintain track on a target even though your radar can't see him can be a huge advantage okay let's come back just a little bit here watch this third missile and I'm wasting missiles here but this is I wouldn't totally call it a waste the objective was never to hit him it was to force him defensive back here when he goes into his notch he could have just cranked right because this missiles distance was so far you know if he had looked at the range he would have known that this is way too far for that missile to hit him a simple crank to the right or left could have defeated this missile however he forced himself defensive too quickly by going into the notch okay it doesn't really matter because as he got closer I would have fired again and then he definitely would have had to go into a notch he wouldn't have been able to out crank a, a closer missile because we saw the speed uh, statistics right the missiles very fast inside of 20 seconds so he wouldn't have been able to bleed that he would have had to notch it so it's fine he put himself defensive a little too early uh, anyway so on this third missile launch you can see that tag view says he's beaming he drops the chaff as we talked about watch this missile it turns turns away from him and starts to track one of those chaffs that he dropped so he actually defeated, didn't defeat, but this one uh, lost the energy, this one lost energy, and this one he actually defeated with beaming. It went for the chaff. So at this point, his aircraft is not receiving any more RWR notifications of missile launches, Okay, which is when he takes the opportunity to turn into me. Okay, Because what he wants to do is now come nose hot so he can get a missile off at me. Okay, he's And he's probably within range at this point enough to at least force me defensive yeah that'll get him a kill at this altitude it'll probably hit me so what I do is right here I've already released my second missile he does make one mistake that I think is essentially what gets him killed here is every aircraft in DCS more in real life they've kind of worked this issue out a little bit but in DCS every aircraft has an RWR blind spot 45 degrees above the aircraft and 45 degrees below the aircraft okay my missile is coming from this direction and because he you know his attitude is like this the top of his RWR blind spot is pointed towards the missile so when I launched that missile he actually did not receive a missile launch notification Okay, due to that reason, he continues to turn into me and not knowing that a missile is coming at him. If he had known, he could have continued, he could have turned cold, he could have, you know, gone for denser air by dropping his altitude. However, for that fraction of a second that he's doing this turn, he isn't receiving a missile launch notification. By now, he's got his nose coming around and 
he is receiving those RWR notifications of the missile launch. However, that missile is now traveling at Mach 4.2 and it's 2.6 nautical miles away. Okay, so he doesn't have any reaction time. By the time he can just about point his nose at me, he's already hit. Okay, and this is a Fox 1, right? So even if he had managed to get off a missile, that missile would have been absolutely garbage because he would have been destroyed. He wouldn't have been able to provide guidance to that missile. All right. So basically, the the moral of the story here is if you only have Fox 1s left, do not engage a Russian aircraft in a head-on fight. Okay. Um, if you want to, I don't know, use terrain masking, use notching better than you saw it here, maybe pull it into denser air. Um, there's other tactics you can use. I'm not saying don't ever engage a Russian aircraft with just Fox 1s. There's ways to do it. And a head-on engagement is not one of them. They will force you defensive, they will keep you defensive, and then they'll kill you. Okay, so just something to consider, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you learned something, at least found it entertaining. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.